everybody, this is Michelle, and I'm here today to share with you my September design team project number one for Country Craft Creations. And I was given this wonderful collection of papers by Echo Park called Summer Adventure, and they're really super cute papers. So what I wanted to do was create an album that you could you know, scrapbook all the rest of your summer vacation with. We just had Labor Day, you might have gone on a camping trip you know, for Labor Day for that extended weekend. So this album is going to be perfect for that. So I'm going to just kind of dive right in and show you how to, um, to create it. So again, these papers are just really, really, really super cute. I just love them. Uh, all kinds of different things with hiking and being at the lake and campfires and all kinds of stuff. So anyways, I'm going to get this out of the way and then we're going to dive right in with how to make the covers. Now, the album itself is seven and a half by seven and a half and the spine is going to be two and a half so you're going to need two pieces of chipboard that I've already prepared and it is seven and a half by seven and a half and then you're going to need us what you need two of those and then you're going to need one spine that's two and a half by seven and a half I've already prepared them with my score tape uh, sheets that I got from country craft creations and then the next thing you're going to need is your card stock to cover now I I'm, I'm using the artisan card stock from Country Craft Creations, and this is the navy color, and it's super beautiful. It's going to match the papers just perfectly. And you're going to need two pieces of those that's 9.5 by 12. All right, so two of those pieces, and I've already prepared those. So what we're going to do first is we need to attach those two together, and I just used a strip of quarter-inch uh, score tape on there to attach it and then you're going to want to line it up on a straight edge so that you make sure you get it nice and straight and the bottom of this table that I'm using has a lip on it that does that so I'm going to just line that up and tape that down now again these were nine and a half by twelve both of them and I used a quarter inch uh, score tape to go ahead and attach them so then the, because of the size of the album uh, covers, we can't really put this here and then put the spine here, you know, and start it at the edge with the one inch border on it to wrap because the, the joining of the two cardstocks is going to be in the wrong space. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put the spine piece right in the middle so that the joining is right in the middle of the spine. And when we do that, we're going to have an inch border above and below. So I'm going to just take off that sheet of score tape and I'm going to put my ruler right in kind of the middle of that and line it up at an inch. And then I'm going to center that. That looks about right. And then plop that bad boy down okay then we're going to do our usual quarter inch uh, space in between the spine piece and the covers so I'm just going to grab my quarter inch score tape and put that down on either side like so all right Make sure that's down really well. And then that'll just give us that quarter inch measurement that we need to make sure that each piece is on the, uh, or, you know, uh, each piece is, what am I trying to say? Each piece is spaced accordingly. How's that? <laughs> so I'm just getting over being um, sick with some weird bug, but um, I'm doing better now. I can talk at least this time, which is good. So then I'm just going to put my ruler down to make sure I get it as nice and straight as I possibly can and then line it up at that quarter inch mark like so, one side down and then my other side down. I um, should tell you I got these score tape sheets from Country Craft Creations and I really like them. They are super awesome for putting down the paper and the or the chipboard that you need for your covers so it's um it works really 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 well so again i'm just using my ruler to kind of line that up 
so that it's nice and straight. So here we go. We got that. So I'm um, just going to kind of give it a good little burnish just to make sure these pieces are stuck down really well. And then you'll notice that we have an inch here. We have an inch here. We're going to need to make an inch here. So I'm just going to grab my craft mat and we're going to just trim that off. And I'm just going to line it up at the inch mark. And whoop, helps if you use the correct side of the blade, that's for sure. There we go. And then do the other side, like so. Line that up. Didn't quite get that side. There we go. Okay. So we have that done. Then what we're going to do is um, this little uh, maneuver of mine I use on my albums because when you score your paper, you want to bend your paper where it's appropriate for the scores. So if you're, if you're doing that, wrapping the album around... Um, if you go on the opposite side, and I know some of you have seen me do this before, and just feel, you can feel the edge of the chipboard, and then just go with your bone folder, and then just kind of gently tease it over that edge. And that will help train the paper and stretch the fibers around your piece, so that when you wrap your covers, you won't have any tearing. Now, that being said, with this artisan cardstock that I'm using, I have not ever had a problem with that. But if you are using something else, then you might. So this is a good technique to use to try and keep the fibers of the paper going in the direction that they really um, should be going. So for years and years and years, I was kind of scra uh, scoring on the opposite side. And then one day I was like, wait a minute, why am I doing that? That's not quite the right way to do it. So this takes a little bit of practice and you have to be a little gentle with it, but it does work really, really well for training your paper to go around where you want it to go. Okay, so then I just do that all the way around and then uh, what I'm going to do is just gently fold the paper in the direction that I want it to go and that'll help train everything the way I want it. Okay, so then... We are going to, I'm going to get rid of this mat for a second, and we're going to apply some score tape to the edges. And I'm not going to go all the way to the corners because we're going to miter those corners to wrap it around. I'm just going to go around this edge here. And I'm also, I'm going to take this off because I'm going to score tape into there too. So. And then um, starting on this corner here, go all the way across, and then I'm going to tease it in there with my fingernail. You can use your bone folder if you'd like, um, just to get it right around in there and lay it down in that groove and around the edge of your chipboard. When you do that, you won't have kind of a score tape bridge that might uh, hinder you from getting you know, your paper where you want it to be when you cover it. I hope that makes sense. It will in just a second, I think. Um, so anyways, we're just going to do this all the way around. And again, I'm just teasing it right into that groove a little bit so that it's nice and tucked in there. Okay, one more side to go, and then when I'm just des designed this book, I've got some really cool new kind of ways to do the elements. I was trying to think a little bit different, so we're going to have some fun making this album, I think. Okay, so now we've got our score tape all the way around. Just gonna, um, oh no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to cut the corners. So when you cut the corners to cover the corners of your chipboard, you're gonna want to leave about an eighth of an inch distance between the corner of your chipboard and to where you cut 
the 45 degree angle. Now the angle doesn't have to be perfectly 45 degree, you can just eyeball it, but you want at least an eighth of an inch because that'll give you a little extra cardstock to wrap around the corners. So don't cut, or at least I don't cut, right to the edge. I will go ahead and leave a little bit of cardstock on the corners. And I'll show you why I do that in just a second. So we cut those corners off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our tape off. And we're going to wrap our chipboard. All right. So uh, my mantra, again, for those of you who have heard it, sorry, you're going to hear it again. <laughs> It's top, bottom, side to side, and that's how I wrap my board. So top and bottom first, and I just fold it over and give it a gentle stick. And then when we turn it back over, we can go ahead and make sure it's burnished down well. Okay, and then go side to side. Now, when you go do the corners, here's where I was talking about. So you have a little bit, you can see a little bit of room um, between the chipboard and the edge of the cardstock. So I'm just going to take, you can use a bone folder too, you can use whatever tool you want, but you're just going to want to tease that in there a little bit, okay? I have better luck with my fingernails, but I've seen um, some people use your bone folder and just kind of tease that corner in a little bit. And what that does, I hope you can see that, is it kind of wraps around the corner of the chipboard. Could you see that? I hope so. All right, and then do the same for the other side. So those are kind of wrapped around, and then when you go to fold that over, you end up you end up with a nice corner that's covered, and you can see there's no chipboard showing at all. Okay, I hope you can see that. Okay. So it works out really nice. I've had lots of luck with that. Um, so that's kind of the maneuver that I do. I kind of nudge that in a little bit, tuck it in, poke it in with my fingernail. And then when I go to wrap it, then boom, it's done. Like that. So then we're going to take and we're going to nudge in the card stock in the corners, just kind of gentle, nudge it in, get it stuck down to that score tape that's underneath it, okay? And do the same here, and you can kind of bend it a little bit to help you see where it is and all that. All right, nudge it in there. Get that down, get it a good stick. Help stretch the fibers to get it in those areas. And then, Go ahead and bend it, and you'll see we have a nice cover. We've got no rips whatsoever. Our spine join is right in the middle where we want it to be. You don't want it to be in the, the bend of the book. You want it to be somewhere solid, so in the middle of the spine or in the middle of the back page. It's where you want that join when you use this technique for covering your papers or covering your uh, albums. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we need to cover the insides before we do anything else. And uh, I chose these papers. Uh, they reminded me of stars. So we're going to have this guy here. And I will explain this piece here. We're going to have a piece here and then we're going to have a piece for the middle. So what I ended up doing was this piece here for the spine cover measures, let's see, four and three quarters by seven and three eighths. These pieces, these square pieces are seven and three eighths, yep, by seven and three eighths. So they're gonna cover this side, this is gonna be the spine, and then this one's gonna be over here. Now I've got an element planned for this piece that's gonna cover most of the inside cover, but not all of it. So I wanted a border around that's going to show and then um, this whole piece here is gonna basically be wasted because of what I'm gonna put here. So I used my frame punch that I have. Uh, if you don't have a frame punch, you can just go ahead and draw lines and cut that out by hand. But I used my frame punch, which made it really easy. I set it at a one inch border, and then I punched all the way around and then cut the punches just connected the lines basically and cut that piece out. So now I have this piece that I can use for something else. 
and it could, because event, essentially it was going to be covered up and it was going to be um, wasted. But now I've got a nice piece that I can use for another um, piece of the project. Okay, so anyway, um, that's what I ended up doing. So if you're not going to put like some big element that's going to cover most of this on here, you could just use two solid pieces as well. Um, but I'm going to do that. I've got a plan for this. So here's my spine piece. This is the piece we're going to put down first. And of course, I did not prepare my pieces with my score tape sheets. So I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and show you how to do that. So I prepared my pieces with score tape to add them to the album. And I have also inked the edges because it's a camping album and you're roughing it. I thought that the edges needed to be inked. Um, on the spine piece, I did not ink the side edges because they're gonna be covered up, but I did ink the top and the bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the spine piece on and cover that particular piece up. And so, you want a good stick with your album papers and the covering on the inside. So I highly suggest that you either use a whole sheet, you know, really cover the whole thing good with score tape, or you go ahead and use a lot of glue. Now, this is going to be covered up, so um, putting it centered side to side is not such a big deal. You can eyeball that. Um, but you want to kind of center it top to bottom, make sure that it's really nice and even. So I'm going to go ahead and try, let's see, to do that. You should end up with roughly an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to stick that down. And then the element that I'm going to put over here on the front, we're going to make sure that this covers that up. And then we're going to put this guy over here. So let's do that. If I can get the square tape off. That's always the fun thing. All right. And so then we'll just go ahead and put that down nice and even. And then we're going to take the score tape off our frame piece here. And stick that down. And then we will make that element in a little bit. Okay. So then this guy will go right about there. There. Okay. We'll go ahead and make sure that gets stuck down really well. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our other bone folder here. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here to get that stuck down nice into those gussets for between the spine and the covers. And you can bend your book a little bit and it'll show you exactly where you need to go. All right, and be gentle with that. You just wanna kind of tease the paper in there. You don't wanna make sure, you wanna make sure it doesn't rip. So there you go. So the inside of the cover is done. This will be the front and this is going to be the back. So we're gonna to need to put our closure and our pattern papers on here. So I'm going to use seam binding to close this with, and I picked this, I got this beautiful green color. Thought it would be really gorgeous. So I'm going to grab my ruler and we're going to kind of line that up. It'll be about, when I use this particular ruler, it'll be about three, quor three and three quarters um, to find the zero center on this ruler. And so I'm just gonna put a little bit of score tape there to hold it down, because we are going to um, glue the cover down. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll do that for the other side, and then our closure will be ready. I love the ribbon closures. These, even though this is kind of a, you know, camping, roughing it book, you got to have some ribbon and seam binding and some pretty, right? So go ahead and put that there. This is going to just kind of hold it in place so we can get it covered. Then put that guy down. So there you go. There's that part. Okay. So again, and then that will tie nice tie closure to keep everything in its place. I'm going to orient it so that it's right side up. So I have this, this is my front of the book and this is my back of the book. And then I have my pieces that I'm going to use and I've already prepared them. So we're going to do this and I'm going to do this. This will be the spine. So we will cover up the joint from our pattern paper. And I have already inked the edges. And uh, you'll notice that there's a different cardstock color. So I'm using green um, from Country Craft Creations as well. So I thought that'd be a nice little contrast. And then the title of my book is going to be This Is Our Happy Place. I thought this was perfect. So for this, now you can use your um, score tape if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and use my art glitter glue. I use both and especially since I s discovered art glitter glue I really 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 like it but score tape for making the actual covers and making sure everything gets stuck down really good to your chipboard I just think it's quicker and easier to do so I like to use that but I, I honestly use a lot a combination of everything all right so the there we go there's our first piece and I'll tell you the measurements here real quick so the green card stock that I used I cut at seven and three-eighths by seven and three-eighths and then the pattern paper on top of it was seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter okay so, there we go. That cover, front cover is done. And we'll glue our spine down. Line it up top to bottom. That looks pretty good. All right. And then um, burnish that down really well. Okay, one more, and then our cover is pretty much complete. I feel like we need gluing music or something here. Maybe I'll see what I can <laughs> figure out in my editing of this video. Okay, and then that's going to go down right like that. Okay. Okay, there we have it. All done. Then I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to put this yet. I do know that that's going to be my my cover piece or my title piece. I haven't quite figured out where exactly I want it. So I'm going to leave that off for just a little bit and we'll figure that out in a little bit. All right. So my book is covered. There it is. So far, it's looking absolutely adorable. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to work on this piece because I really want to show you what that's going to look like. So this is what I am calling a log cabin pocket. And I got the idea from the log cabin quilts that um, I've seen. Um, my mom is a quilter and I would love to be a quilter, but 
uh, paper crafting has just totally taken my entire life. So maybe one of these days, but um, log cabin quilts have a really cool um, direction where the squares kind of go around. Log cabin, you know, camping, it kind of um, fit the thing. So anyway, um, I kind of came up with a log cabin pocket. This is going to take um, some paper to do, but it turned out really cute when I kind of was working out the design. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to need several pieces of paper. So you're going to need one that's seven by seven and I'm labeling that piece A. So seven by seven and it's piece A. And then you're going to need um, a piece. Oops, hold on. I'm getting my notes situated so I can tell you. Okay, so then you're going to need another piece that is um, six by seven, and that's going to be piece B. So six by seven is piece B. You're going to need a six by six piece that's piece C. A piece that's five by six, six by five, that's D. And a piece that's five by five, that's E. Okay, these will all be in the cutting guides as well. Um, you'll have all the pieces. So uh, let's show you how to put this together. I'm going to get the cover out of the way for just a little bit. And then we're going to start. This is going to be, A is going to be the base piece of the pocket. All right. This is what's going to adhere to the book. But this is the base of the rest of our pocket. So we're going to take these in order, as I told you. And we're going to basically stack them together. So the next piece you're going to need is piece B and that's the six by seven piece and we're going to glue it on top of this pocket. And when we do that, let me see if I can find something to show you with. Yes. We're going to glue this one in such a way as to make a pocket that goes like this. Okay, so we'll glue it on the three sides. So let's go ahead and do that. You're just going to glue it on the three sides. It's going to make a nice little tuck pocket. All right. It'll open at the top, so you just want to layer that down over top of that pocket and glue it down. If you wanted a little more room in this pocket, you could easily create gussets, which will give you a little bit more space, but I wanted to kind of also try to keep the pocket as slim as possible since it has so many layers. Okay, so there's layer one. So we have the base that was seven by seven, piece A, and we put on top of it piece B, which was six by seven, and we created a top pocket. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a pocket that comes out of this side and we're going to use this next piece which is six by six and that will layer right on top of that other pocket to create a side pocket. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on these three sides. Again, this piece is six by six. This is log cabin piece C and go ahead and use our glue. Along the edges there to create that pocket. And then we're going to go ahead and line that up. Glue that right down on top. Now, for those of you who are totally into quilting, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So when we get done with our piece, we're going to have some leftover strips. And we're going to use leftover strips of patterned paper to put on this pocket. And you're going to get kind of a nice, really nice quilted effect. It's going to be really cute. I think you're going to like it. Okay, so we're going to layer our next piece. Piece D is going to go here. And piece D is going to create another top pocket. 
Okay, so we've got our first pocket here, and we've got our second pocket here, and now we're gonna create a third pocket, and again, that's just gonna be glued on the three sides. This piece is six by five. This is pocket D. So we're going to go ahead and put our glue on again. All right, one more time. I'm gonna turn it just so I can kind of line it up a little bit. It's hard to see with that cardstock, it's kind of dark, but I can do it, I know I can do it. There we go. You wanna line it up with the edges, but don't go over the edges of the actual pocket pieces because you don't wanna get glue you know, in your pockets and stuff like that. We can always, if you need to, trim the sides a little bit later if we need to. Okay, so now we've created that pocket right there. And last but not least, we have the last piece, which is the five by five log cabin pocket E piece. And that one is going to layer on top. And one more time, we're going to have a nice little piece or pocket on the side. So then we'll glue this like that. And then, I'm gonna put that on, and again, I'm gonna get rid of that for just a second. Turn it upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Get that right to the edge of the pocket. There we go. There. All right. So, there you have it. There is your pocket. So now you've got these four pockets. So not only do you have four pockets, you have a nice five by five space to put a picture, or you could use one of your four by four cards. Um, what did I do with this? You could put that here. That could be another, um, well, if you put it the correct direction, of course, that could be another um, element to do. You could put a picture there and you have four nice pockets that we're gonna cover the strips of the pockets with pattern papers, and it's going to create a pretty kind of quilted effect. So this particular pocket piece is going to go on our front cover. So let me get rid of this for just a second and grab our cover. Well, first, let me trim the edges. Like I told you, we can trim the edges. So the edges on the sides here, if they're not quite even, you can go ahead and grab your weapon of choice wherever I put it. What did I put it? Where did I put it? Seriously, where did I put it? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, I'll get a different weapon of choice. Here we go. One more. All right. So, and then you can just trim the edges and make it nice and neat. There we go. Just in case you have some edges that need to be trimmed up. That looks really good. Okay. Yep, that looks good. All right, so, oh, there it is, found it. Of course, after I use it, I find it. Okay, so then take your book, and you see what I'm saying? This is going to pretty much cover that entire um, piece. So that's why we cut out, we wanted a little border of the paper because you wanna have that harmony between the front and the back covers, uh, but you don't need this whole inside piece, so we can use that for something else. You could even put that on here if you wanted to. I suppose you could. I suppose you could, because yes, it's totally big enough for that. So anyway, um, just a thought. Anyway, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this bad boy down, and then that front pocket element called the log cabin pocket will be done. And I just think when I did the practice for this, trying to figure it out, it turned out super cool. Maybe I could just show you, I've got it right here. I just got the idea, I was looking at some quilts because I have a friend who, was, who quilts and she came to visit me at work and she had one of her pieces and um, it was just absolutely stunning and I got the idea for the pocket. And so Lucy, if you see this, this is, this is, Dedicated to you. You're the one that actually inspired me to create this pocket. All right, so there's my log cabin pocket. So you'll have four 
really nice pockets here. They're big enough. They will fit big tags. Um, I use these tags just to kind of show you. Um, this is what I used in the practice album. Um, but anyway, there's your nice log cabin element. Let me show you kind of what it looks like in my practice album that I did right here. So I decorated the tags, but look at how pretty that turned out with the different pattern papers decorating the pocket. Yep, so that is the log cabin pocket. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let's focus on some pages. Let's focus on some pages. So we're gonna need four pages for this book. And the pages themselves, you're gonna need four of them, and essentially they're all the same um, with a little bit of tweaks. They all have a gatefold on the front, so every single one of them will have a gatefold on the front. And then they all, on the front page, will have a pocket on the inside. So two of them will be uh, vertical, and then two of them will be horizontal, and they, so they'll alternate, okay? So page one will be horizontal, page three will be horizontal, and then page two and four will have vertical pockets, okay? So I already went ahead and prepared these pages. Now, a couple things. So we're gonna prepare page one, so that will have the um, horizontal pocket in it. Um, and then when you put your pieces together, so when you put them in the book, they'll turn like this, they'll be attached. This is the hingeless system. So they'll attach together like that. So like kind of like a waterfall thing. But remember when I do my books, and this is how I'm gonna do this one, and I will show you when it gets time. So your last page, the hinge actually, want you want it to go the opposite direction because you're, that's going to lay right on top of the hinge prior to it. So that when you turn your last page, you will not see the hinge on this side and it will keep the spine open because we use pattern paper on our spine and so we're gonna want a little bit of that to show, okay? So I'll, when, I, when we get to that part, I will show you, but just remember when you're putting your pages together, you want three of them, the hinge to go like towards the back, but you want the last page to go towards the front, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, it will in a minute. So I already prepared the other ones. We're going to prepare this one. So you're going to need four pages that are seven and three quarters by seven. And on each of these, you're going to put it in your scoreboard. And you're going to score it at a half of an inch. And then I can hear somebody saying, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Because that's going to make it so that you have an extra quarter of an inch on your page. And yes, that is the truth, okay? So you're gonna put your page in here at seven and three quarters, and seven is over here. So on the seven and three quarters side, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna score it at a half an inch. Now, why? what we're doing is we're going to make the hinge, but then you're also going to have an extra quarter of an inch give is what I'm calling it for your pages, because we're adding elements on top of these pages, and it'll give you a little extra room so that when you open it, you don't interfere with the actual binding. You have just a little bit of a, a kind of a give space to play with. So that's what we're doing with this. So again, you'll need four pages, seven and three quarters by seven, and on the seven and three quarters side, you're gonna score it half an inch. Then you're going to need two gatefold pieces for the front pages. And there are two pieces that are four by seven, so four by seven. These will be scored at half an inch. So you'll need a total of eight of these because each page will require two of them. And then the pockets are all the same too. It's just a matter of whether you put it uh, horizontal or whether you put it vertical. But they're gonna be all the same size and they're all gonna be scored the same way. So you will need four of these pieces and I cut them at seven and 15 sixteenths by three, okay? And the reason that I took off that extra sixteenth of an inch is that when you put the pockets in between the gatefolds, when the pockets are horizontal, 
they will fit perfectly right inside of your scores for your gate folds and you won't have any issues with it being too big. That extra 16th of an inch taken off will help it tremendously, okay? So that's why I did that. So seven and 15 16 by three, and you will need four of these. They're all scored the same way. So you put in your scoreboard, you'll score it at a half an inch, and then you will turn it around and put it in there and score it at half an inch. And that's important because it's not a full eight inch uh, piece of paper, okay? So you put it in one way, score it at half an inch, and then completely turn it over, score it at half an inch. All right, so then what we're going to do is, first off, we're gonna take our page and our gate folds, and you're not gonna want, do not miter the corners of your page. But we are going to put some score tape on here and we're gonna miter the corners of our gate folds. Um, these are gonna be covered with pattern paper on the inside when we decorate the album. So um, you don't have to worry about, when I put the score tape on, I'm only gonna put one piece on, I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. It will be covered with pattern paper, which will also help it adhere down. So go ahead and fold your pieces, okay? And then we'll put our score tape on. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that sticky. So we'll put our score, oop, there we go. Put our score tape on, and I'm gonna put it kind of close to the score, but not quite to it. That will also help it get a little give when we open the pages a little bit more flex if you put it right to the score lines then you might not um, you might actually kind of end up adhering it adhering the score down and then it won't turn quite as nicely I found in when I've been doing this so I just go just you know a little bit before the score and then go ahead and miter your corners and then to put these gate folds on, we want them to match up pretty perfectly. And the easiest way to do this is, is we have our page. So here is our, here is our binding part. So we wanna make sure we have that. So we're gonna have the gate folds go like this and like this, and then they're gonna open like so. so we're going to put the side piece on first that goes towards the edge of the paper and we're going to line it up to the edge okay stick it down and then we're going to take this piece and we're going to butt it up against that other piece that we just put down to make sure that it ni lies nice and flat against each other when we close it okay so we're going to take our score tape off and the easiest thing to do just push that down line it up and then stick it down and then you can see the gate folds they open really nicely to each other they're not too far apart they're not stacked up on on each other and we still have that quarter of an inch give space before our binding piece. Now this is page one. This pocket is going to be the vertical pocket. So we're going to, again, we're going to fold our half inch tabs in on each side. We're going to put our score tape on. And then we're going to miter our corners. I always like to put my score tape on when I'm using the score tape for this particular part um, first because then when I miter my corners, the score tape goes right to the edge of it. And I'm not fussing with it, especially since I like to use the technique of using my fingernails and it doesn't, you know, cut as straight as a, you know, scissor. <laughs> so when we stick this down, I'm only taking tape off one side and I'm going to just put it down here, line it up to the bottom of the page in between the two score lines. There's going to be just a hair of space between the score lines and put that down 
And then we're going to grab our glue and I'm going to put a line of glue on the edge of the pocket down here and take off my tape. Here we go. So now you're going to do that with all four pockets. Now there will be different elements that we're going to add to these pockets, but this is the base page that you're going to make. You're going to make four of them. So let's put these in order. So we have the first page tab towards the back, the gatefold horizontal pocket right here. And then we will turn this page. This page will have the tab to the back, gatefold, vertical pocket. Next page, tab to the back, gatefold, horizontal pocket. And then the last page, tab towards the front, gatefold, vertical pocket. All right, so there are our base pages. Okay, so for the front of the first page base that we did, so page one, we're going to need a couple pieces. So we're gonna need one piece that's two by seven, and this is called the page one pocket closure. Again, it's two by seven. And then we're going to need a piece that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And this one's called the um, also the page one pocket closure. So these two pieces is, are what you're gonna need. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter and two by seven. All right, so this was designed in mind for a three by four journaling card. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, you're also going to need one brad. This is a swing closure that I came up with and I think it turned out kind of cute. So we're going to put our journal card onto our artisan card stock, this three and a quarter by four and a quarter piece. Um, you kind of have to do some of this ahead of time. Some of the pages you don't have to cover with pattern paper first, but some of them you do have to get it ready because of the way that it goes together. We're gonna go through all of that. Okay, so that piece is prepared set that aside and then I've got a couple pieces of the wood grain pattern paper so we're going to go ahead and add those to the top of our gatefold and those were cut at six and seven eighths by three and three eighths. Okay, so took an eighth of an inch off of the kind of dimensions of the cardstock, or yeah, that I'm putting it on. Does that make sense? So the panels for the gate folds are seven by three and a half. So I did it six and three, or six and seven eighths, excuse me, took an eighth of an inch off of seven, and then um, three and a half, take an eighth of an inch off, it is three and three eighths. So I'm just gonna layer that down so it has a nice little cardstock edge there. All right. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adhere the two by seven closure piece. So you can, um, We'll cover this with pattern paper when we're done, but basically that's going to glue over top of that pocket, just like so. But it's only going to glue on two sides. It's gonna glue down this long side and then down the bottom. So let's go ahead and glue that down. We can cover that with pattern paper after, which we are going to do. That's just gonna go over the top there Looks like I might have to trim the top just a wee bit. Okay. 
Okay, so it essentially creates a closed bottom, but the top is open. Okay, let me look at that. Yeah, trim a little wee bit off of that. Let's see, I have to do it off camera so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> So I did that, kind of trimmed that up a little bit. All right, so then what's gonna happen is this piece is going to attach with a brad in this corner, and then it will swing out like so, and then swing into the pocket and essentially keep the gate folds closed. So before you glue it down, you know, make sure you gotta have it kind of centered and then just hold with your finger, hold it down, and then just kind of play with it and make sure it's going to do what you want it to do, which it looks like it's going to, so that's pretty good. So that's how I designed it so that it would hopefully go in there nice and it will keep everything secure, which it worked in my prototype, especially once you put this particular piece on, this pattern paper on, then it's gonna make it nice and sturdy okay so i'm just going to kind of line that up in the middle and you could measure if you so chose and make sure you get it nice and centered these are seven inch pages so line it up at like three and a half and get that nice and centered looks about right and then we're going to put our hole right there so I'm just going to take this fold it over lay it down take my hole poker go through there and lose it as soon as I pick it up there we go and then just to set your brad All right, so now you have your swing closure element. So this will go down and that will close your book. So then you can add your pattern paper to the other side. Like so. That'll complete that pocket. Now, if you have a vertical piece that you want to use, this particular piece here, this pocket, is going to have to be a little bit wider. But for a horizontal 3x4 card, this actually worked out just perfect. So then you'll do that and then you'll open it up. There's only one thing you do have to remember is when you open the page, you're gonna have to lift it up just a little bit because that will kind of hang over the edge. Um, just a little bit, okay? So you don't wanna bend your card, but when you close it, I mean, it's gonna make it's gonna make a super cute little closure like that. And then on the inside, when we cover it with the pattern paper, we wanna make sure that we don't put glue or adhesive on this spot because you're gonna want a little bit of give with the brad to help with the mechanism of the whole thing, okay? So there's that. That is the front of page one and that is the swing closure for this particular piece. Um, when you do this, you have to remember, you have to cover it with pattern paper first, and you need to cover and pick out your journaling card or pattern paper or whatever you're gonna do to put this part on. All right, so there's that part. Now we're gonna go to the next page, which will be page two, and we're going to create some pockets. So these pockets here, oh, pardon me, measure, you need two of them, and they measure four and three quarters by seven, so you'll need two of them. And then what you're going to do with these is stick them in your scoreboard and we're going to score at, let me make sure I do this right, three and a quarter. 
and then six and a half. That'll give you a half an inch over here, and then you're gonna turn it, and then you're going to score at four and a quarter. Okay? So three and a quarter on the seven inch side, and then six and a half, and then turn it, and then four and a quarter. All right, so we're going to do a wee bit of trimming. I'm gonna use glue on these pockets. So we're going to miter our corners here. I'm gonna think about this, make sure I'm doing it correctly. I think I am. Thinking, thinking, hold on, thinking, just making sure I want to do this right. Yeah, so we're going to do it like this. And we're going to cut this tab off here. I think this is how we're going to do it. We're going to find out. <laughs> no, it's going to be right. It will work. So you're going to end up with a piece that looks like that. Okay, we're gonna do it for both of them. Okay, get these pieces out of the way. And then we're going to do some folding. So we're gonna fold that, make sure, oops, it lines up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to <clears throat> we're going to glue this tab to the inside of the pocket here and then this tab on the bottom is going to be where we attach it to the page. So we're going to glue this tab and then we're going to glue the bottom of the pocket. So that will close that pocket off. Now we may have to trim just a wee bit more off, which I do need to do, make it fit. So check your fit and make sure that it's going to turn nicely. You'll probably need to cut right to the edge of that score that you made to make sure that everything turns nicely, okay? We're gonna do two of those. Now, before we glue, or, well, actually, we can do it anytime, but I also made, where's my envelope punch? I made a tab, I wanna make a tab that goes in the middle, like that. So this, this pocket is three and a quarter. So the midpoint to this will be, let's see, about, can't read it, I can't read it, so about uh, just three and, what is it, five eighths, or one and five eighths, excuse me, that would be the midpoint. So take it and put it in here and line it up to three and five eighths. And make a punch and then you'll have a finger pull tab for your pocket okay so let's do that again actually that should go around that side and we're gonna need to trim that off just a wee bit too because I didn't quite get it to the top edge of that score oh still didn't there we go There we go. There, that fits better. Okay. 
to make sure. All right, and then we're going to put it in here. We're going to line it up to one and five eighths. And we're going to punch it. And there we go. So now we have our two pockets cut and punched. And then what we're going to do is get our glue. Now this bottom piece here is going to adhere it to the book. So don't put any glue on that yet. I'm going to put some glue on these tabs here. And we're going to put a line of glue at the bottom to close the pocket. And then fold it over. Like that. One pocket done. So we have our pocket and then we have our flap at the bottom. Next pocket, do the same thing. Little line of glue. Fold it over. Okay, so now back of page one, page two, this is where they're going to go, and we're going to alternate them. So one is going to open from the bottom, one is going to open from the top. We're going to use our little tabs to adhere them to the page. We will um, be adhering them to the edges so that when we put our pattern paper on, they will cover those tabs. And uh, you're going to get about a quarter of an inch, is that about, that's about right, quarter of an inch from the top, you're going to want to make sure you do a quarter of an inch from the side over here, and a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So let me show you. Put some glue on the tabs. About a quarter of an inch in. and right to the edge of the book. Like that. Okay. And then over here, we're not only going to go a quarter of an inch from the top of the book, but we're also going to go a quarter of an inch from the side of the book. So we got to make sure, and I'm going to use a different ruler for that one because I have a hard time seeing with that ruler. It's so dark. Okay, so you can also, sometimes what I do is I put my rulers down so that I can kind of see both ways, especially since this ruler only has markings on one direction. Just kind of try and see what I'm doing here. Make sure, and they will touch too, so you can help, that'll help line them up. Okay, so now your pockets are glued on, and they will open like that, and then you'll have a cute little pocket to put some finger pulls. Then the next thing you're going to need are magnets. These are held with a magnet closure, so let me grab those super quick. We'll put those on. Okay, so that wasn't too super quick, but I grabbed them. <laughs> I got these magnets from Country Craft Creations as well. And these are the basic gray large magnets, and I love them. They are amazing. And I highly recommend them. So put your magnets on, and then when you're ready, you can cover with pattern paper. When you cover these pockets with pattern paper, the pockets themselves measure um, on each side four and three quarter, or excuse me, four and a quarter, four and a quarter by um, three and a quarter, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And just cut your paper an, an eighth of an inch smaller. So cut it at three and an eighth by four and an eighth, and then put it in your punch board and do the punch in the center, and then they will line up perfectly to cover your papers. All right, so there we go. There's the two pockets with the magnetic closures. 
and we will cover all of that with patterned paper um, and later and that will be good to go but you don't have to put these pockets on before you put on patterned paper like you did on the front so page one with our swing closure and then we have page two with our magnetic side pockets all right okay so we're back and this is going to be the second base page so this is essentially page three of the book and again we have our gate closure on the front and this page has the vertical pocket so what we're going to do is we're going to create a magnetic closure on the front and then we're going to create a double belly band on the back so uh, we're gonna I already have prepared a piece of cardstock, but it measured three and a quarter by four and a quarter and It's called page three closure and what I did was I, I designed it so that would fit a journal card So if you have another, you know size journal card like a three by three or whatever you can do whatever size you want But I designed it to use um, this particular size of card and I went ahead and glued that on and then we're gonna just do a simple magnetic closure on the back so I went ahead and um, put the magnets on each corner, one in each corner, and then we're going to, if I can get the tape off, we're just going to simply line it up in the middle and stick the closure down. So then this will come off and then that is how you open it. And then um, the cover on the back is going to be simply just another journaling card. So it'll be kind of not really reversible in that you couldn't put it, you know, on the other side. Um, but when you take it off, it will still have a cool um, journal card element on it. So I'm just going to do this. This one says, go see do. And that's going to be the inside piece here. And then just make sure that is glued down nice and that will completely cover this magnetic closure element boom there it is so then after this now we can cover our gate folds with their pattern paper of choice so that's that particular closure so then on the back super simple but it's a double belly band idea and i just have two pieces of paper one is four by eight, and on the eight inch side, you're gonna score at a half and seven and a half. So again, you just need one of those. This is page four, belly band. Score on the eight inch side at one half and seven and a half. And then the second piece, you're gonna have a two by eight piece, and you're gonna score at half and at seven and a half again, okay? Very simple, but very cool when you get it done, especially when you get the papers layered on it. It kind of um, it looks really neat. So again, we're going to fold and we're going to burnish and you do not need to miter the corners on this because it's going to be covered with patterned paper anyway and it's in the middle, not near the corners, so it's not going to really show. So you don't have to do that. And then... Um, Basically, you're going to layer this on top of this, and then you're going to layer this on top of that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to use my art glitter glue here and glue both corners. Now remember, oh well, we'll do that in a second. I'm going to eyeball this one. So you'll have about an inch on each side. Okay. And then we're going to glue this one on top of this one here. Now remember, this is this is where I was going with that now, now remember thing. So your page that we're building onto really is only seven inches wide because we're still keeping that quarter inch give space before the tab. So when you line this up, make sure you take that into account. So line up your ruler when you're finding the center, line it up at three and a half on this edge because then it would give you that seven inch page at three and a half on the other side and your quarter inch gusset here. And then lay that down 
like so. And then you will have your double belly band pocket and that is roughly a half, uh, one and a half inches from the side of the page. So when we get done with this, we're going to have our magnet closure for this particular gatefold and then we'll turn it over and then we're gonna have this nice belly band, double belly band pocket. Okay, and then we will put pattern paper underneath and cover it up and make it pretty and it'll be gorgeous. So that is the second base page. And I can't get that in there. Anyway, and that part is done. So let's move on to the next page. Okay, now this page here is going to be page five, which is the third base page that we're working on. So this will be like the fifth album page. And we're going to do a tag closure on this one. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is cover the gatefolds with our pattern paper. So I chose this, I thought it was super cute. And let's go ahead and do that. Again, using my art glitter glue. Now some of these pages, I know you have to kind of cover them with pattern paper and stuff before you put the elements on. Some of them you don't, but um, I think this turned out really cute. And I have a variation that I was playing with off of the kind of the little belly band with the stick kind of closures for mini albums um, that I wanted to play with and I thought it turned out really well. So um, it made a nice closure and it also made a really nice place to do like you could do a journaling thing and I'll explain that in just a second. But um, this particular closure turned out really kind of cute. All right, so we have our um, pages covered. On this one, it's important to cover our pages first. All right, we're gonna let that sit and dry for just a sec, and then we're going to grab our scoreboard, and we're going to need a piece of paper that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, this was meant for a journaling card, so if you wanted to, you know, a, a three by four journal card. If you wanted to use a different size piece, um, you could, but you'll have to alter the measurements. But for this particular book, I did four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Be easy to alter once you get the concept down. Um, it's a piece of cake. So we're going to score two sides. We're going to score it at three eighths and at one half. So three eighths and one half. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to do that again. So we're going to score at three eighths and one half and you're only going to do that on one side and again this is for a three by four journaling card element that we're going to use on this if you use a different size element you're going to have to have a different piece of cardstock but you'll be able to figure that out once you see how this is put together so this is going to give us an eighth of an inch gusset to help with the closure so i always love folding these they're so hard to do sometimes. All right, so fold and burnish your scores here. Maybe that'll help. All right, and one more, maybe. There we go. I'm gonna tease it down there. You gotta be careful. All right, so you're gonna have an eighth of an inch gusset for your closure. Okay, so we're gonna work on the third base page, and this will actually be page number five. And we're going to do a journal card um, closure with a tag on it. So this was meant for a three by four horizontal or landscape type journaling card. Now this particular kit, for whatever reason, only had one in the entire line that was horizontal. So what I ended up doing was taking, they had some four by fours with some extra uh, pieces at the end and I just trimmed it down to make my own three by four uh, journaling card. 
So anyways, this is this is what we're going to be using for this. Now on this particular page, you have to cover your gate folds with your pattern paper on the top uh, first. And then we're going to grab, and you'll have to forgive me, I had to um, stop this video and delete it but um, and redo it. So we're going to kind of go over this one more time though. So then you'll need a piece that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And you're going to score each of these at three eighths and a half, and then turn it around and score at three eighths and a half. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's going to give you like an eighth inch kind of gusset area in this piece. All right, then we're going to take our little journal card that's going to cover this and we're going to glue it down and this is going to go so that the hole goes in from the side. Okay, so we're going to make sure our tabs are on the top. We're going to take our, our glitter glue and we're going to, aren't those leaves cute? They're giving me another idea as I'm playing with the paper. It's funny how inspiration hits, isn't it? Okay, so put your little journal card down here. Now, if you're going to want a different size or use a different um, piece of journaling card, you know, different size journaling card, different piece of paper, um, you can do any size you want with this particular closure. You just have to plan accordingly. So I have an eighth of an inch of cardstock all the way around, plus you need a half an inch on two sides to create the closure. Okay, so then we're going to do something that's going to kind of probably freak you out, but we're going to cut this in half. So I'm going to go over to my cutter here real quick. I'm going to chop this guy in half. So let's see, that's going to be about two and an eighth right there. And I'm going to create two pieces just like that. Okay, I'm going to grab now I've already pre inked my edges. So I'm just going to real quick ink those cut edges again to make everything kind of match. All right. And then we're going to adhere this right to the edge of our gatefold. And when we do, the card's going to line up just like that. All right. So, um, you know what? I am going to miter the corners just a wee bit too. Only to the 3 8 inch mark because we still want our little gusset space. So, just like that, so we still have our eighth inch gusset space that's intact. So we only did our tabs. And then we're going to apply our glue. This is why you need to, um, and you need to cover your pattern paper first so that you can put this on. All right, and so that's going to go right about, oh, I can't see it. Let me turn it to the side a little bit. Sorry, guys. All right, so that's going to line up right about there for the middle point. I could have done that a lot easier, I'm sure. But... Ah. Yeah. That's how I should have done it. Okay. Nope, I still didn't do it right. Let's see if that works. <laughs> All right. So, that's probably the way I should have done it. Okay, so. inch and seven eighths. Eh, it's not quite centered, but it'll be okay. Yeah, it's about an inch and seven eighths. So about an inch and seven eighths from the top and the bottom. Okay. And then glue that down. So the easier, bestest way I should have done this is should have taken the bottom tab and fold it so you have the eighth inch gusset there and then line that up right 
to the bottom there. Lining it up with your rest of your journaling card. Okay. And then nudge that gus gusset down. And then glue that part back down. Hope that makes sense. So that when you fold your gussets up, then everything will match up. Just like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a three by six piece of cardstock, and I used a tab punch and just created a tab on each side. And then this guy, once we get it covered with patterned paper, it gets nice and thick, and that creates our nice closure for this piece. So you can put, I um, was thinking putting pattern paper on one side, and then the other side you could leave open, you could do journaling on it um, if you wanted to, but then that would just go right in there. And the gussets make it a lot easier to get the tags in the space. Otherwise, you kind of can struggle. Um, I've done a couple different prototypes. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Um, we're gonna do one more and um, it'll be vertical this time. So we'll do one more and you'll get to see it one more time. Okay, so that's that particular piece. Then on the back of this piece, we are going to do a pocket with a gatefold type piece. So we're going to need a couple pieces for that. So we're going to need for the pocket, which is what we're gonna put down first. Let me get this stuff out of the way. For the pocket, we are going to need a piece that's five by eight, and we're going to, oh, pardon me for just a second. We're going to go ahead and we're just gonna score at half an inch and at seven and a half. So that's the five by eight piece. That's the piece. <laughs> that's the page six pocket. We're going to score on the eight inch side at half and at seven and a half. And then we're going to take our two gatefold pieces, and you'll need two pieces. One is going to be four and a quarter by ten and a half. This is page six gatefold piece, and we're going to score this guy at four and a quarter. And that's it. So just four and a quarter. We're gonna take this piece here. This is the four and three quarter by four and a quarter. So four and three quarter by four and a quarter. And this is the second piece of our gatefold and we're just gonna simply score this at half. Okay. And then what we're going to do is a little folding and a little punching. So the pocket piece goes on first and it's going to have these tabs, which is nice. So we don't have to cover our paper or our, uh, piece with pattern paper first. So we're just gonna fold those down and we're gonna glue the bottom. So we're gonna just do a little miter here and then we're going to grab the envelope punch again, and we're going to punch it right in the middle. So this paper now measures, when we put the tabs in, it now measures seven across, just like our page. So we'll line it up at three and a half, and we'll punch, and that will give us our little divot. And we're gonna grab our page. So it's gonna go on the back of this page and we're going to put it down right on the edge and glue it all the way to the bottom and again giving our quarter inch give space. So I'm going to glue this part down first making sure I get it all lined up nice and neat. down and then we're going to put a little glue across and a little glue on the other tab
and lay that down just like that. Okay, so that is going to give us a nice top pocket. Okay. It'll be glued at the bottom. All right, then what we're going to do, I'm gonna take this off first, is let's put this aside. And here is our gatefold piece. So we're going to fold that over. So this is going to give you, this piece here is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it'll fit a four by four picture or a four by four um, cut apart. And then this is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that'll be a perfect place for a nice big picture. And then this guy here, again, once we fold the tab and attach it, will be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that'll give you another piece. So then we're going to go ahead and miter the corners just a wee bit. And I'm going to adhere that to the inside. So I'm gonna adhere the back of this six and a quarter by four and a quarter piece to the tab here. And then line it up just to the fold and then glue that down. All right, so now we have a piece that should look like this. Now you can do a couple things. You could do a magnet closure on here if you wanted to. I want to do a seam binding closure because I want to use some seam binding and I'm just gonna put that in the middle and I'm gonna adhere it Yeah, so let me grab some seam binding and I think I'm going to use the tan this time and I'm gonna cut off about 13-ish inches, 12 to 13 usually works about right. And I'm going to put it on the back of this, round about in the center on each side. And line that up so it should line up where the middle point will be after like two and an eighth inch put that guy there and then do that i know i'm kind of going fast i'm sorry about that i don't know why i feel like i'm in such a I feel like I'm behind or something and I'm trying to hurry, but if you have any questions, please, 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 please let me know. All right, so then we're just going to put lots of glue on here and we're going to glue it to the middle of our pocket. Okay, we're going to take our piece and line it up in the middle of that pocket. Right like about that. There we go. Super simple, but really nice extra element because now you'll have a page that opens up like that. Now you technically, if you wanted to, you could make this a pocket as well. You could go ahead and leave this top edge open and um, use that as a pocket as well, but I chose not to do that. But then when we get this nice and tied, then we'll have a nice pretty bow and it'll look really super cute. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so that's the back of that page. I'll trim this up and everything later. But so now we have a top pocket here. So just like that. And then when we open this up, it'll have a nice fold out. And that is on the back of our page where we have 
our tag closure. All right, on to the next page. Okie dokie, so now we're gonna work on the front part of our very last base page. And remember, the last base page has the tab that goes to the front because that's how we're going to adhere it into the book. And this has a, an interesting little magnetic closure that will have some uh, interaction to it. So we're going to need a couple pieces of, whoop, excuse me, paper. And the first one, or this one's going to be nine and three quarters by four and a quarter. So nine and three quarters by four and a quarter. And we're going to score it at three and a half, and we're going to score it at six and a half. And this is designed to use the journaling cards. So um, we'll, we'll use the three by four journaling cards, and then you could also put three um, by four pictures on here as well. And then you're going to need one other piece of cardstock, and I used a uh, different color um, for this and it is three and a half by four and a half. That is not on your cutting guide. Um, you can use scraps, you could use um, you know, some pattern paper if you wanted to, but that's just gonna be the base of this, but this part is not on your cutting guide. So just one piece of contrasting something. So um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the Z fold kind of element and we're gonna need a couple pieces of seam binding where you're gonna just attach that to the back here, right in the middle, because it, it was going to have a tie closure. So we'll do that real quick. And we'll center it as best we can. There we go, about there, and about There. And then we're going to adhere this piece to our base cardstock piece. Okay. I'm going to clean that tip off. All right. So then we shall flip it over and put it on our base piece, just like that. Okay, so then what we're going to end up having is a cute little um, element that will open up like that and like that and give us some added space for pictures. Then we're just going to tie our seam binding around it. That'll be the closure for that part. Like so. Right on. And we'll trim that off just a little bit. Where's my other scissors? I'll find them in a minute. Okay, so <laughs> I'll trim that in a minute. Um, and then we're going to glue part of it to this side, okay? And I'm actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use a little bit of score tape here. I'm going to glue that there. Get rid of these pieces. And, all right. So then we're going to center it. So it's going to be adhered on the left side. And, yep, I did it, just like that. And then we're going to put a magnet for closure on the other side. Oh, you know what? Oh, shoot. 
Let's see if I can do this. I should have covered that with pattern paper first. Sometimes with score tape, you can do that. Ah, I did it. All right. Hang on tight. I'll be right back. Okay. Fixed my boo-boo. So what I did was I picked my pattern paper for this particular piece and I put the pattern paper down first and then I glued my element onto there so that it'll lift up just like that. And then I have my magnet. So we're going to put our magnet down because we cannot put the other piece of pattern paper on without doing this first. So that's going to just adhere right there. And then we'll take that off and lay that down and our magnet is glued down and then we can put the pattern paper over top of that and then this page will be done so you guys just saw how sometimes with score tape harder with glue but with score tape you can use i used my spatula from my cricut machine and you can kind of weasel in under the edges and tease it up which is what I did. Sometimes that works really well. And it worked, thank goodness, this time. So I didn't ruin my piece. So that's my little hint. And um, I've had some comments that y'all like it when you see me do a goofy and show you how to fix it. So that's how to fix it. That tool works really well. So there you go. There's the closure for that. And then this will untie and then you will have another interactive element for your album. So that is that. And then now we're going to do the last page. And we're going to do another tag closure, but it's going to be a vertical pocket this time. There we go. Cute. I like it. That turned out really cute. Okay. <laughs> so on the back of this, we're going to do the closure and um, we're going to also let's see there's the closure there's the flap we're gonna do that in a pocket okay so this page is gonna be kind of cool so we're gonna have a pocket a flap and then our closure so let's prepare our pieces so the flap is going to be four by seven and we're going to turn it onto the four inch mark so I should have it like that. So four at the top, seven down, and we're going to score it at one half. All right, that will be that. And then the pocket for this page is going to be eight by three and a half. So eight by three and a half, and we're gonna score it on the two sides at half and seven and a half, okay? And that's it, because we're going to glue the bottom of that. And then we're going to do our closure. Now our closure is going to be a vertical closure, and we're going to use this vertical journaling card. So what we're going to want to do is make sure that the flaps are on the sides, because we want the tag to come in from the top. So we're going to do a four and a quarter by four and a quarter again, and we're going to score it, let's see, I did it backwards, but we'll score it at half, and we'll score it at three and three quarters. And then our little journaling card will fit nicely right inside there. Okay, so let's do all of this. Let's get a book. There's our last page. So this is the last page, page four, which would actually be page eight. First thing we're gonna wanna do is put on our pocket. So we're gonna fold those tabs in and we're going to miter corners and glue it down. And then I'm not going to forget, I gotta put pattern paper on this one too because you can't do this element without doing that. Okay, so this pocket's gonna go here. So let's get our art glitter glue and Glue this first piece down, 
right at the edge, lining it up nice and straight, right there. Just like that. And then we'll grab our glue. We'll put glue on the tab. And we'll put glue across the bottom. Fold that over, lay it down. And remember, you will have a quarter of an inch give on this page. You want that for all of these page elements to help the pages turn nicely. All right, so there's the pocket. All right, then we're gonna do our flap. The flap's gonna go right on top. Now the thing with the flap is that before you glue this down, double check and make sure you don't need to trim anything off because you really want the edges to match cleanly. So what I mean by that is double check where your, your fold is going to be and it's going to need to sit right on top of that pocket nice and neat, which this one does. So just double check. If you end up cutting it a little bit too big or whatever, you're going to need to trim off a little bit, but you want that to kind of match that pretty perfect. Okay? So we mitered the corners and... Go ahead and put our glue on our tab and line that up to our pocket. Alrighty, glue that down. There we go. Okay, so we've got our flap. We've got our flap and we've got our pocket here. Okay, so then now to the closure. I went ahead and covered with pattern paper, which is very important for this closure. And then we have our journaling card all prepared and then we have our four by four and a, four, four, four and one quarter by four and one quarter piece. We've scored it on two sides at half an inch and we're going to just Fold this, burnish it, and I'm going to trim those, miter them just a wee bit. Okay, and then we're going to glue this guy down here. Isn't he cute? This kid is so cute. I love this. All right, here we go. All right, so we got our little guy on there. Okay, so we're gonna to have to cut it in half so that when the page opens, the, when the tag will hold everything shut, but when the page opens, this little guy will be in half. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so I got my little guy in half here. That sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Um, ink the edge again. And then, oh, you know what? I did not do the 3 8 inch gusset either. Boy. All right, so put this back in here. So it's already scored at a half. So score 1 8 inch from the outside, see? This is how you fix your boo-boo if you forget. And then we'll do that on this one because we need that gusset because it really does help get the tag in since the edges are completely rubbed up on each other. You know, they're completely next to each other. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. There we go. All right, that's one. And that one. Okay, there we go. 
Alrighty, so I'm gonna center this guy. So right about and I wanna say there's about an inch and seven eighths from the edge. Let's double check that. Inch and seven eighths. Yep, right about there. So about an inch and seven eighths, that's where we wanna start gluing. So I folded, this is the easiest way to do it. So I folded my gusset so that I just have the three eighths inch tab here. And then at an inch and seven eighths, use the other side. Inch and seven eighths from the edge of the card stock. So that would be right at the zero mark, right about there. Make sure the edges line up and then glue that down. And then fold that gusset over, fold that gusset out, glue on the tab and then lay it down. That is the easy way to do it. Then when you fold that tab up, you'll be centered and you'll have that 1 8 inch gusset in there. Now just repeat the process. That's how I wanted to show you. That's not how I showed you the first time, but this is how you should do it. Okay. Like that. You don't have to use a ruler this time because we've already got it lined up with first one. Okay. Right on the edge. Perfect. And then fold that back. Glue on the tab. Make sure that gusset is folded back. And there you go. Then when you fold that gusset up, you will have your gusset, okay? There you go. So there's that. Then you take your tag, and this again is a three by six. So depending, if you wanna change the shape of this, you can make it any way you want. Um, it's very customizable, so you can make tags any way you want. So then I just put the three by six tag in here, and my idea is that I'm gonna use some stickers and make a stop down here so that your tag won't fall out. But with that gusset, it's really easy to get your tag in and out for the closure. And then the stop, of course, will help it from falling down. But then that will, once we cover it with pattern paper, that's gonna be a very nice closure for the back of that page. All right, so the last thing, we'll see. Oh, we got two more things to do. So we need to put our pages in the book and then we need to make our waterfall. So let's, Real quick, grab our book, put our pages in. I'll show you how that goes. And then let me get these pieces out of the way. All right, so we have our book. We've got our pages in order, so let's go through that. So page one. Page one. Tab to the back. So I'll go like that and then it'll turn like this and then we will have our little pockets, the magnet closure. We have page two, which will be right next to it. So that has a magnet closure that comes completely off. And then back here we have the double belly band page. Then we have our first tag page, tag closure page I should say. And then we have our pocket page with our um, fold out. Then we have our trifold interactive page with a magnet closure. And then we have our second but vertical tag page. Okay, and that one, the last page, the tab has to be flipped to the front. All right, so what we're going to do is there's a half inch gusset for all of the pages so we're going to measure half an inch in from the side here and we're going to put a pencil mark so you're going to find the edge of your chipboard here it'll be easy to do and we're going to line that up and 
It's easier for me to see with this ruler, so just bear with me here. Right about, yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, I'll measure. Yep, okay. So I just drew a pencil line just for a guide. All right, then we're gonna take our pages and we're going to glue them down. So I'm gonna put glue on my tab here. Okay, and I'm gonna line it up on that pencil line. And I'm gonna space it on the top and the bottom. There we go. About like that, make sure it's nice and straight. That looks pretty good. All right, page one down. There we go. All right, page two. We're gonna put the glue and we're just going to butt it up against the tab for page one. And glue it down, just like that. Make sure everything is lined up. Pages line up really well. All right, page two down. There we go. There. All right. Page three, same thing. And then I'll show you what I was talking about when you use patterned paper on your spine and why I'm doing it kind of backwards. All right, so page three, same thing. Line it up right up against the other one. Okay. All right, so page three is in there. Now, if we were to do it the other way, we're going to end up seeing a tab on our spine, which I don't want to do. On the front of our album, we get to see some of the spine piece right here. I want to see the same thing. So that's why we're doing it opposite and that's why we're gluing it right on top of that tab because when we turn the page to our last page we will still see the spine and it will look like a nice finished edge. So we're going to glue this right on top of the tab of the previous page. Flatten it out just a little bit. I'm going to make sure that I don't go into the score because then that will cause problems with your page turning. So I'm just going to do that. There. And now we have a nice, nice finished edge here for our page and we get to see the spine as well. All right, so there's that. We are done with putting the pages in. I'm gonna get a couple things ready and then I will be back and we will finish the waterfall on the next page. Okay, I'm back. So we're gonna do the waterfall part of the book. Um, that's on the back page and I do have to say I'm going to edit the video and I'm going to make sure y'all know this but you really need to put the waterfall closure on the back of the book before you put the pattern paper on. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I was able, because I did use score tape, to use my handy dandy little 
uh, Cricut tool and weasel my way under there without having to ruin the paper and recover it and all that. But I did do that. And then um, what I did was you measure um, into the book and uh, put it in there about even and it should work out just fine. So anyways, I went ahead and did that. And then um, we're going to make the pages. So this is an alternating waterfall um, page and you're going to need three pieces for the portrait part of the waterfalls that are three and three quarters wide by four and three quarters tall and these will be scored when you put them in your scoreboard you score them at half you do it this way score it in half so it'll give you a four and a quarter inch page and then you're going to need three pieces for the landscape pieces that are three and three quarters by uh, four and four quarters and on the three and three quarters side um, I went ahead and scored it at three and three quarters and then I turned it around so that the score was on the top and then I scored it at half an inch just to the score line and I scored it at three and three quarters just to the score line. That's going to give us some cut marks for making our pieces. So we're going to take our scissors and on the landscape pieces where we did the extra half inch deal, we're going to just cut down to the score and then just chop that little square out. Okay. And you're gonna want to go like right to the edge of the score line so that you kind of cut that out so that you don't see any of the score lines. So you're gonna end up with a piece that looks like that. Okay, so we're gonna do that with all three pieces and if I turn it just the right way, the light shows me where I'm cutting. And you just need to do that on the landscape pieces. Okay. And like that, one more. Just like that. Okay. And the waterfall closure, I should tell you, is two by five inches. And I scored it on the five inch side. I put it in and scored it at three eighths and at um, one half. So that gives you an eight inch um, gusset space. And then I have this uh, piece here that I cut that I'm gonna use as a base for this because it's gonna be a lot easier to put it on. Um, that's three and a quarter wide, which will match the three and a quarter tabs that we have for our pages. And let's see, I cut it at two and three quarters, but I think that I'm gonna have to trim that a little bit, so we'll double check that when we get done. So anyways, just go ahead and fold and score all your pages like so and these are the pages the horizontal pages that have the little notches cut out that tab will measure three and three quarters that's as wide as the other tabs are this is how we're going to make it alternating and when i did this in my practice book it turned out so stinking cute i really liked how it looked turned out really good okay so we're going to start here's our portraits and here is our landscapes so we're just going to start gluing them down. You don't miter the corners on these. You don't need to do that. Oh, come on, glue. Maybe get my glue. A little plug in there. Come on now. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take the first one is going to be my portrait one, and I'm just going to glue it onto the base, you know, like so, okay? Just like we've done um, for other waterfalls. What did I do with my little rag? There it is. Way underneath my table. And these pages are designed to be for three by four pictures or three by four journaling cards. Okay, so first one done. Then we're going to take our landscape and put glue on the tab. And we're going to carefully butt it up, making sure that we 
get it lined up with the edge. And there we go, like that. So now we'll have the top page will be the portrait, and then the next page will be the landscape. And we flip that up, grab another portrait. This has a very, this turned out to be a really cool effect. Um, the one thing though you do have to, whoops, the one thing you do have to be careful of is when you put the landscape down because you can't see kind of over the, you know, edges. So you have to try and really make sure that you get it lined up perfectly with your base so that they all match. So you can kind of see where the edge is, where you cut, but then when you kind of put it down, you might want to lift that flap up and then nudge it a little bit. The glue will help you give you an extra second so that you can stick it down and have it centered properly. Hope that makes sense. So third one, portrait. So we alternate landscape, portrait, or portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape. Get the glue off my finger. All right. So the last one will be the landscape one. And it will be backwards again, because I always do them backwards. So it's going to go over the edge of, or go over the tab, excuse me, of the previous one. So I did need to trim a little bit off. So let me take care of that super quick, because I don't want that showing anywhere. So I'm just trimming that base that I made. And so then that base technically will be, once you get all the papers on, let's see, this one measured two and five eighths by three and a quarter, okay? Um, so then we take our last landscape piece. And we're gonna lay that tab right on over the previous one, just like that. Okay, so when we close up our element, we are going to have the coolest little waterfall you ever seen. <laughs> so, yeah, I think so anyway. Okay, so you have a portrait and then a landscape and then a portrait and a landscape and a portrait and a landscape. And when you fr bring that landscape up, that base will be attached to your page and then you'll have the rest of the pattern paper to do with whatever you want and you won't see the tab. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the book and we'll put it in. Okay, so I have the book. It's on the back page. This is a two by five and on the five inch side, we scored it at half and three eighths and that gave us an eighth inch gusset. We're gonna use a magnet closure on this and then this guy will be centered right in the middle. And then we'll use a magnet closure and we will have our alternating waterfall. So I'm just gonna grab some glue here and put it on the base. Make sure you don't get it on the landscape page. Unless you want to glue it down, you totally could do that if you wanted to. I just wanted it to be available for yet one more picture. So then I'm just going to put it in here and I'm going to line it up and center it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. That looks really good right there. I'm going to lay that down and then just go in and make sure we get a good stick in between all of the pages. Like so. All right. <clears throat> One more magnet. So it appears that I used eight magnet, no, yes, six magnets in this book. There we go. So put that magnet on here, get it in there so you can see it. And stick that down. Okay, so then you have your alternating 
waterfall element. Boom, done. All right, so that's the tutorial. Let's run through real quick and then um, we are done. So thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for uh, watching and um, let's run through. So we have our beautiful little camping book here and I still haven't decided where to put the title yet. I don't know how I'm gonna arrange that yet, but we're gonna find out. And then when you open the book, we have our water, or excuse me, our log cabin pocket, which has four alternating pockets. That's going to end up looking like a quilt when I get done with it. We're going to have our swing closure page, which has the uh, horizontal pocket. Then we're going to have our <clears throat> pocket page. Goes like that. We're going to have our, our magnet page, magnet closure page that has the vertical pocket. Back here, we're going to have our double belly band page. Right here, we're going to have one of our tag closures, our horizontal tag closure with a horizontal pocket. And I like that, just hike and be happy. That's cute, I do like that. And then we're going to have our pocket page here. So we have a top pocket here, and then we have our another gatefold picture opportunity page with a seam binding closure. And then over here, we have another seam binding closure that has a fold out element. And then this magnetically closes to this page. And then we have another pocket. Turn the page. We have our vertical pocket tag, po or uh, excuse me, our vertical tag closure with a pocket in here. And then, and I'm gonna put a stop there too. And then we have our alternating waterfall. There we go. So that's my first design team project for September, and I hope you like it. This uh, is Echo Park, Summer Adventure. Thanks for watching. Have a really good day, and I will be back soon with more tutorials. Bye-bye.